JJ the CPA here. Hope you're doing well. So I'm recording this from my Zoom camera. I'm going to be putting together a PPP forgiveness webinar right after the first of the year. This will be the time when I will be recommending to my clients that we begin the PPP forgiveness application process. We are wanting to wait until the next stimulus comes out. Today is December 12th, 2020. I am expecting that we will know some kind of stimulus bill by the end of the year, but regardless, we will want to start the PPP forgiveness application process. With that being said, we know that in the next stimulus, there could be a blanket forgiveness. There has been talk about that for 150,000 or less. If you really read between the lines, I think really where it will end up is that the form 3508S as it exists right now is for 50,000 or less. I think that'll be expanded, pure speculation to be 150,000 or less. I don't think there will, there will be just a straight up automatic forgiveness. You'll still need to do a calculation. You'll still need to submit documentation, I believe. That is what's required right now. But with the Form 3508S, which may be expanded to loans that are 150000 or less, you don't provide the calculation. You still have to do the calculation to determine the amount that you're going to list, and you still submit documentation. Now, one of the other aspects is the PPP tax adjustment in terms of how does that come into play. We know right now the PPP forgiveness amount for the employers or those that used it for expenses will have to make an adjustment for whatever the amount of PPP forgiveness is. And then for the self-employed, we know that there is no tax adjustment because for the self-employee, which is the Schedule C, Schedule F filer, there is no expenses that it is used for. Schedule C, Schedule F filer, if you've got employees, then you will have a reduction in your expenses for what is forgiven for PPP based on what was used for you to pay your employees. Now, I'm not going to get into all of that because I've got plenty of videos where I have but nonetheless, regardless of the tax adjustment, which we know is the next major thing that we are wanting to hopefully know out of the next stimulus, either way, for my clients, every single one of them, we will be submitting the PPP forgiveness application. So what I'm anticipating is that there is going to be a great demand for those that need help with this. So I'm going to have different ways to provide the service. It will start with a Zoom meeting. Um, I will be doing a Zoom and I'll be providing schedules as well as worksheets that would go along with the calculations. Obviously, I know the forms include the final calculation, but in determining the information leading up to that, as well as then going through all the different aspects of the PPP forgiveness application process. I'm going to have a seminar directed towards a webinar Zoom directed towards the self-employed Schedule C filer. It will be shorter. It will be then less expensive. And then I will have a PPP forgiveness application webinar for those that are not self-employed. One of the things I thought I would cover for you right now, because I'm getting a number of questions related to the due date of various aspects of the PPP forgiveness. So I have been working on the PowerPoint presentation related to these webinars in anticipation of doing them. So I thought I would just share with you uh, very briefly um, what we are looking at here. And so you can see that I've got a number of slides uh, related to this right now, um, 43 slides. Um, the seminar will probably be two hours long going through a number of these things. Each slide will require some additional commentary 
Um, part of the Zoom will be also pulling up the forms, doing the calculation, going through examples. Uh, but one of the things that seems to be uh, being brought up here is related to key dates uh, for the PPP. Uh, so a number of things that I'll be hitting in the seminar is which form to use, how it works for the self-employed, number of things related to that, uh, payroll costs, what's included uh, for the payroll costs, as well as for the owners, how that works, what's included in non-payroll costs, going through the paid and incurred, uh, talking about the exceptions. But then on the key dates, um, the covered period is 24 weeks from the date of disbursement. That's key because the PPP forgiveness application is due 10 months following the 24 week covered period. The FTE and salary reduction requirements end when the application is submitted or 1231.20. The bank has 60 days to approve and submit to the SBA and then the SBA has 90 days to improve and inform the bank borrower. Well, you have to excuse I won't start this over. I've got a neighbor across the street and he bought a Lamborghini and for some reason when he turns it on, he feels like he needs to rev it up, I guess, so all the neighbors know that he is getting ready to pull out of the garage. Uh, other key dates, payments of any unforgiven amounts begin 12 months from the date of disbursement. In the seminar, I'll talk more about the finite details of that, but here's what's uh, key as well is that if the SBA has not determined the forgiveness amount, payment will begin on the entire amount of the PPP loan 12 months from the date of disbursement. Uh, if you've not submitted your application for forgiveness or it's in progress, payment begins on the entire amount of the PPP loan 12 months from the date of disbursement. Now remember, 12 months from the date of disbursement, most of you, the earliest you would have gotten it is early April that 12 months would be early April. This is why I'm having my clients uh, submit right after the first of the year. Uh, the other thing on the key dates is interest begins to accrue on any unforgiven amount from the date of disbursement. Now, if 12 months from disbursement, you are required to make payments because the forgiveness amount is unknown, any payments being made after the 12 months on any portion of the loan that is later forgiven will be refunded. An expiration date on the application for the PPP forgiveness has no effect on any of the dates above or listed and does not change any dates above. It only relates to the form itself and is an internal note to the SBA. Putting in your PPP forgiveness application right after the first of the year is key. I won't be having my clients wait much past that. Even if we don't have stimulus before the end of the year, even if the blanket forgiveness is up in the air, even if we don't know about the tax adjustment, we will be putting together the PPP forgiveness applications after the first of the year. Any additional information that we get after the first of the year, we can apply because here is the key. When putting together the forgiveness application, we know that we have to do a calculation. Even if we go with what many are calling blanket forgiveness, I do feel we'll still have to ensure that what is getting forgiven is the amount that should be forgiven. I do not anticipate in any way, shape, or form uh, that we will be in a set of circumstances where they will forgive an amount above what you deserve to be forgiven. They're not going to do that. Period. Not going to do it. Wouldn't even be fair. The other aspect is that to submit the PPP forgiveness application in the event that there happens to be an effect related to when you have the tax adjustment, which really in my mind has already been solved. But nonetheless, there would be no advantage then to continue to wait. Uh, my reasonings have been waiting until right after the first of the year. So, we are here in mid-December. I am going to go ahead and you'll see a link in the body of this video where you will be able to sign up for one of my two PPP forgiveness application seminars. One of the things to note is that 
because you are reserving this in advance, if for some reason you're unable to make the webinar as I'm recording it and doing it live, all participants will get a link to the seminar, to the video. It'll be unlisted. It'll only be those that pay that will get the link, but you'll be able to watch that video as many times as you would like for 30 days. There will also be materials that you will get with your payment to attend the seminar. You will not get those materials until you attend the seminar, um, but the reasoning for that is that we want to ensure that it's the most up to date. The PowerPoint that I'll be putting together and all schedules, all worksheets, everything that I have put together, I will also compile all of the SBA aspects related to the instructions, the FAQs, and the guidelines, which yes, you can get from the PPP uh, section of the SBA website, but I will be compiling that as part of the seminar. So look closely because there will be two different seminars. One for the self-employed, which will only be for the Schedule C, Schedule F filer. The second seminar will be for those that are not a Schedule C, Schedule F filer. It will be for those that have C Corps, 1120S, partnerships, and I will note that if someone is self-employed, if somebody files a Schedule C or F and they have employees, that would be the applicable seminar as well. So the first seminar is for the self-employed that has no employees, files a Schedule C. The second seminar will be for those that have employees and have payroll costs. Again, we're still going to need to do the calculation. There are a number of things that we will be looking at as well. So I'll just give you a, a minor preview here of the aspects. And um, I thought I would just note this uh, really quick. Uh, but we know that there's going to be some differences. And um, I know that I'm not giving you the official PowerPoint because I'm not giving you a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, but going through what are the exceptions, the payroll costs, um, the payroll costs of what gets to be included, uh, the owner compensation, how that comes into play, who's considered an owner, uh, the self-employed, uh, walking through uh, what forms apply to what set of circumstances. So at the end of the day, we're getting close enough. And since I'll be putting it together, these PPP forgiveness applications for my clients, um, this will also be designed for those clients that would rather attend the seminar versus having me prepare the return. They can attend the seminar. Uh, know this for now, I will be doing one uh, seminar for each. I will not necessarily release a second date to do the seminar. So you might count on this being a one time only. I don't know at this time. It will be tax season. What is that? Uh, the other thing that's important for you to know, because I already said it, is that if you pay to come to the seminar and for whatever reason you can't make it actually to the seminar, I will be sending a link to everyone uh, that they'll be able to go back and watch the seminar as many times as they would like for 30 days, as well as get all of the materials, whether you're present or not. All I ask is that you not pay for the seminar and get the link and the seminar materials and then use it for other purposes. This is meant to be for you. I'm also going to be doing a monthly tax and financial seminar by Zoom. Uh, so every month I will be doing at least one Zoom seminar. What will be different from those from what videos I put on YouTube is that they will be concise with materials, links, schedules and worksheets that may apply as well as the PowerPoint and it will be full encompassing. So it will be in a seminar format. Those videos will never be released on YouTube and they will not be part of my membership program once released on YouTube. So it would be meant for those that want to be kept up to date, not just on tax, but what's going on in every aspect related to money. So it will include 
what I'm talking about with my clients every month. So I have put down also the date that I'll be doing that monthly seminar, and that is a link in this body of the video. So I've got three upcoming webinars in January. One will be related to the self-employed for PPP forgiveness. One will be related to the employer, if you will, C Corp, S Corp, partner, partnership, and the self-employed with employees. That will be the second webinar. And then I will have a third webinar that will be my monthly webinar going through planning tips, what I'm talking about with my clients right then. I probably will have some additional tax seminars specific to a number of issues, excuse me, but wanted to let you know about this. All right. Hey, so I'm having a seminar now, depending on when you watch this, I had a seminar on uh, December 13th or having, and it sold out, I think with whatever 24 hours times four days is, what is that? 96 hours. Now on that one, I only had a hundred spots. Um, I am considering having more spots for each Zoom, but nonetheless, it sold out within about four days. And uh, I know a number of people wanted to uh, attend and just didn't get signed up soon enough. All right. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel and know this, I will still be putting out very regular videos and updates on YouTube that you will be able to continue to enjoy for free other than watching a short ad, if you will. And they will be encompassing uh, the difference between my YouTube videos and a Zoom webinar seminar is that the YouTube videos are typically one subject at a time and not necessarily all at the same time. All right. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Love it if you'd subscribe. And then don't you ever forget, you've never met a CPA quite like me. Have a great day. And uh, again, check out the links below and uh, see about signing up for these seminars. Talk to you soon.